Maybe you could be in tournaments that I host. I hosted a tournament on YouTube yesterday, which is pretty fun. If you didn't see that video yet, that's like the previous, one of the previous videos of me like playing against viewers. But anyway, let's get started. What is the first move by Karik Sparv? What do we do? What did we do here? I am going to get 100% accuracy this time. Okay, Wyatt, Wyatt Williams, let's do it. Edward Stockfish, your friend. <laughs> I'm happy I found this channel before because I recently came back to chess after a while, king break, and I was clueless. Hey, I'm glad. Thank you. E4. Yeah, so the first move that Gary Gasparov played was E4. After E4, we got the moves... And I, I got to go through the opening first because it's kind of weird asking you, like, what is the best move in the opening when there's different variations. After e5, we got knight f3, knight f3, knight to c6, and then we're going into the Roy Lopez again. After bishop b5, a6, bishop to a4, we're going to, we're going, um, to a repeat of this opening. After bishop a4, knight f6, kingside castle by Gary Kasparov. Uh, you probably can't see the board. Bishop to e7. And after bishop to e7, we got the moves b5 again, bishop b3, d6. And then after the move d6, we got c3. c3. And then castle kingside. After castle kingside, we got the move h3. Again, preventing the move bishop to g4, bishop b7, and what was the next move here? What, what are we doing now? What are we doing now in this position? Matello, are, are you a GM? Is that what you're asking? Nope, I am not a GM. I, my rating is 1800 USCF, and my online chess rating is around 2100. I've been teaching for over a decade now, so I have a lot of experience teaching elderly ones. To I, I taught kindergartners how to play chess. It's crazy, crazy enough. I got two kids myself that I'm going to teach how to play chess. Um, yeah, Morningstar, you are correct. We got the move next, d4, controlling the center. After the move d4, then we have, dang, get in my way. Then we have to move d, then we have to move rook e8, and then what is next here? What is next here? What would y'all play? Never mind, Sh shaking in the, what are you? Striking in the center with d4. Yeah, striking in the center with d4 because you got to control the center. If you control the center, then you control the game. And all grandmasters already have a, a, a conception of that principle already. That's why they always fight in the center and centralize their pieces in the center. You get the most space there. Why not become a GM? Because I got two kids and a wife. <laughs> Rook e4. Where are the white pieces here? D5, so we got the cousin, do cousin of Phil Josh, um, not pawn D5. We're still developing pieces here. So remember, just like in the last game, we're still trying to develop these, <laughs> these queenside pieces. We can't just be going threatening things without having our full army out in the open because in chess, activity is king. Activity is king in chess. If you're not fighting with your whole army and you're fighting with half of them, then you're going to lose, especially if you're facing a tough opponent. So what is the next move here? Bishop g5, not bishop g5. It's actually the same move beforehand that most people should remember. Mark, you are correct. We got the move knight b to d2. Knight b to d2. Actually, did I miss a... Wait a minute. Did I miss a move? I'm thinking I missed a move. Ah, snap. I did. So after Bishop E, dang it. Okay, I'm just going to go back because I missed Rook E1. Actually, I'm not going to go back. After Bishop E7, I missed a move. Rook E1 happened. And then now Knight B to D2. I can't just go back. <laughs> I missed a move. Forgive me. Oh, I didn't notice the time pretty late. I got school tomorrow. Hey, if you got school tomorrow, go to sleep. <laughs> because I want you to do well in school. Hey, catch the stream tomorrow. After, okay, so after 
knight b to d2, then we got the move. I mean, rook e1, then we got the move bishop. We got the move bishop to f8. I push the f8, a4, and then our opponent does the move h6. After h6, and then we do the move finally, bishop c2, then e takes on d4, and now this is when the middle game starts. How, how are we dealing with this pawn being taken here? How are we dealing with this pawn being taken here? Dang, it's 6 a.m. for me. Every, everybody's in here from different countries. Let's get it. It's going to be a late night. What's the best chess book you would recommend to an intermediate player? Um, where's, my, where's my books at? So if you're already intermediate, then you should just get the book. This book is pretty awesome. This book is pretty awesome. Just get this book. It tells you all chess principles that you need to know in chess. All the chess principles. This book is awesome. And then I have another book that's called The Art of Attack. Let me just show you these two more books. Just to get off subject. Y'all should be saying the best move in this position. What are you doing after E takes on D4? These two books is really good if you're trying to get better at chess. All right, but let's get back into this game. Take back, what are we taking back with? What are we taking back for the, okay. Who just said that? Mark, you just had the move. C takes on D4. After C takes on D4, then we have the moves by our opponent, knight to B4 again, bishop to B1, then C5, kind of like a recreation of the last position. After, after C5, what are we doing next here? After C5, what are we doing next here? And it seems very similar to the last position, but it's going to change in just a minute because they play. So grandmasters play positions and they, they like change up the variation that they're going into just slightly. So it's the exact same move that we played in the last game. And do anybody remember? Sorry for distracting everyone. I really appreciate the recommendations. Yeah, don't mention it. Karpov studied this game and is coming back for revenge, probably. And hopefully he doesn't come back to re <laughs> Hopefully he doesn't come back for revenge uh, to me showing this game again because this is ugly. This is an ugly game. They didn't really see the game. E5, not E5 in this position. We got to deal with this tension on this D4 square to C5 square. How can we deal with this tension between these pawns here? If we're playing at our best here, what would you do? Would you take the pawn on c5 or would you push up? Would you take the pawn on c5 or would you push the pawn? Knight to b3, we got d5. Mr. Morningstar, you are correct. And Mark, you are correct too. Got school, but I will beat my friends tomorrow in chess. Let's go, Corbin Intellectual. <laughs> beat your friends, beat all of your friends at school. So after the move d5, we got, we're going into this variation. Again, a knight back to d7, rook a3. And then it's going to deviate at this present moment with f5. Beforehand, in the last game, you might remember the move C4, but now we're playing the move F5. After F5, what do you think Kasparov did next here? And let me just give you a hint, because it's going to be hard to find this move. He formed a battery somewhere along a file. <laughs> he formed a battery. What are we doing next here? I'm looking at the chat right now. I'm giving you the opportunity to do your best. Here. Rook to E3. Which rook? There's two rooks that can go to E3. What is a battery? A battery is when you have two pieces of, of trying to control either one file, one rank, or one diagonal. So, for example, if you put a bishop and a queen on the same diagonal, that would be a battery on that specific diagonal. The same thing with a queen and a rook on one file, that is forming a battery on that file. Not really good of notation. Queen c2, not queen c2. 
Yeah, so Queen C2 would be forming a battery, but Knight takes on C2 would be very disappointing. <laughs> the not really good on at notating the A rook. Okay, so the next move that was played here was rook to e3, rook a to e3. After rook a to e3, we got the moves knight to f6, and then Garrett Kasparov did the move knight to h2, trying to reroute that knight to a better square or trying to push up that f3 pawn. So after knight to h2. King to h8. Then we have the move. What do we have here? We got b3. After b3, protecting that a pawn, then we have b takes on a4, b takes on a4, c4 pawn moves up again. After the c4 pawn moves up again, what are, what are we doing next here? And this position is winning for white, just to let everybody know. After that C push, it's not really, the computer isn't really liking that. Make sure that you like the video. Yeah, you was right, man. Yeah, surprise. hey, that's good. Keep on saying the moves. You don't know if you're right or not unless you just put out the move. I don't know who you are and you don't know who I am. I, I mean, I guess you can look at my face and you know what I look like, but I don't ever know who you are. So don't be embarrassed. You don't know anybody in the chat either. Who cares if you're a beginner? Just learn how to play chess. Knight takes on C4. Knight takes on C4. Well, let me let me see this position right quick. If Knight takes on C4, then F takes on E4. And it's just a different position. But Gary Kasparov did a, a different move. Because after knight takes on c4, f takes on e4, and now this is like a, it's a different game, of course. And bishop can take on e4, but then this, this pawn is going to drop. And yeah, that's just going to be a different tactical game. Gary Kasparov made it easy. He looked at one of his pieces and he was thinking, okay, that piece is garbage at this present moment, so let me put that piece on a better square. It's up to you to find a piece that Gary Kasparov put on a better square. What piece do you think he put, put on a better square? A rook to b There's not a rook that can go to b2. E takes on f5. No, not that move. Throw the game and quit chess. Matello, stop. Why, why do you want to throw the game? We're not resign. We don't resign on this channel. We're not resigners, man. We never resign. Why should we resign? Queen, C, uh, Bishop C3. There, the bishop can't go to c3. Bishop a3. I'm going to head out. I'll be back next stream. Okay, B, uh, B Beach boy. Okay. See you later. <laughs> You're trapped knight of bishop a3. Well, everybody that's saying bishop a3, you are partially correct, but it's not that bishop going. I mean, it's not going to a3. That bishop isn't going to a3, but everybody who's picking that bishop, you are correct. That bishop is looking lame, but it goes to b2. And I know what y'all thinking. Bishop a3 attacking a knight, but Garrett Kasparov seen this bishop being more useful on this diagonal than the a3 diagonal. This a1 to ha diagonal is definitely special since it's x-raying the king. And there's a lot of tactics that can happen once you see the x-ray. After bishop to b2, then we have the move f takes on e4. If you're Gary Kasparov in this position, what would you do next? You ever been to Florida? Uh, nope. Bishop b2, e takes on f5. What are we doing next after f takes on e4? Wyatt Williams, back in the old days, I resigned every time I made my first blunder. Come on. Yeah, you can't do that, man. That's not how you improve. I did not improve that much. Yeah. When you resign, you, because this is, the, this is the thing. You can't avoid horrible positions. So you have to learn how to defend them. And once you learn how to defend them, that's when the real skill is going to come in, especially if you're a beginner. You should still be trying to be, do the best moves in a losing situation. Whenever the bishop is attacking the whole diagonal, it reminds me of a Sicilian dragon. Yeah. 
Yeah, pretty much. Um, Brandon, Brandon James, Knight takes on E4. Yep, that is the next move here. After Knight takes on E4, then we got the move. Knight F to D5. And now, if we're trying to attack our opponent, what should we do here? We did a Rook lift for a reason. And it's basically the exact same move in the last Gary Kasparov game that we just looked at. What are we doing here? Finally, I got one right. Oh, snap. Have you been trying this whole time? Hey, now that was actually a good move. Clay 100, welcome back. Welcome back to the stream. Let's get to it. How about a brilliant move work? <laughs> what? Um, bishop takes on e4. Knight takes pawn. Mark, you remember, rook to g3. And once you see a move like rook g3, you, you start realizing something. And when you're a chess player, you got to have a good imagination, right? You got these bishops aiming at the king. You got this bishop on b2, and you got this bishop on b1 and to h7. You got this knight that can hop into these squares anytime that, that it wants to because it's in the center. I know it can't hop into these squares right now, but in the future, it might be a good idea for this knight to be here. This knight can hop to g4 and sacrifice itself on h6 in the future. This rook is taking control of the whole g file. This queen can hurry up to go to h5 to attack the king in a hurry. If we had two moves right now, queen h5, queen takes on h6 would be very threatening to the king right now. So, with all that being said here, Karpov is in trouble. Especially after the move rook to g3. After rook g3, rook to e6, and he already knew that he had to defend that pawn on h6, which I don't know how he got into this position again. Gary Kasparov made a mistake. He should have played knight to f3, but he played the move knight to g4. After knight to g4, which is a definitely a human move, like the knight f3 move, who would play that? You just came from knight f3. Knight g4, queen e8, and yes, this was a big blunder by Karpov. This was a huge blunder. What would you do next here? And this is when the attack starts. This is when the attack starts. What is the best move in this position? If you're Gary Kasparov, if you're the world champion, you're trying to defend and you want to pummel your opponent with awesome moves. This is going, this is going almost like the last game. Yeah, pretty much. He lost the exact same way, just in a different fashion. Imagine that. I would never play this opening ever again if I lost like this twice. <laughs> How do I move my pieces? What, what do you mean? What do you mean? How do you move your pieces? Uh, just just say the move in the chat. Say the move in the chat. We're going by algebraic notation here. Bishop takes on g7. I'm, I'm liking how you're thinking, but we do not want to be too rash. And we want to think about the right sacrifice. Bishop takes on g7. I don't think it's working in this position. But another move is definitely working. And I want y'all to figure it out. Why not just push all pawns? Why not? You can do that in your own game, but we're trying to become better chess players. Knight to f6. Not knight to f6 in this position. There's a lot of squares attacking the f6 square. Knight takes on d6? That's a pretty random move to be playing in this position. That's a pretty random move. Mark, you are... Man, Mark, you've been getting all these moves. Can anybody else say the move? Can anybody else say the move but Mark? White to, yeah, it is white to move in this position. Mark already set the move. I want a whole row. I want a whole line of moves. Sack the queen. You don't always have to sack the queen, man. Leave the queen alone. <laughs> Leave the queen alone. What are we doing here? So we got one person that already set the move. What is the next person? What is the next move here? Come on. I'm looking at all of you. <laughs> Got this sword here. Yeah. Knight h6. Matello, you are correct. Mark Marcaius Anderson, you're correct too. Knight takes on h6. I know y'all probably wondering what happens on knight takes on h6. And how and I want to just say how comfortable do y'all think y'all are with this sacrifice? 
how comfortable do you think you are with the sacrifice? What? What the shenanigans? I'm I'm trying to look at the chat. How comfortable do y'all think y'all are? Just stop putting us on the spot. <laughs> I'm putting y'all on the spot. Wait, why can't Rook take on uh, the knight? The pawn is pinned, so the pawn can't take. Now, the move that Karpov played in this position was c3 but what happens after rook takes on h6 and yep now i'm putting you on the spot what happens after rook takes on h6 and this is pretty ugly that gary kasparov see this is really ugly This is really ugly. Knight, wait a minute, it involves moving the moving the knight, obviously. Knight, knight. A lot of people saying moving the knight somewhere. I do not like it at all. I feel really uncomfortable. It might request a re okay. Okay. Calm down. Knight takes on d6 is the move here. This is what Gary Kasparov seen. Knight takes on d6. Best move to play, queen h5. And I'm, I'm just going to do the move for you because I don't want to put you on the spot again. But Gary Kasparov seen, had to see the move rook to g5. And then if queen takes on d1, then we get into this awesome position. Knight to f7, check. Because that's the whole purpose of rook to g5 to distract the queen to do knight to f7. King g8, knight takes on h6, king h8, rook takes on d1, and this is completely busted for the black pieces. And notice this, the g pawn cannot capture on h6 because of this bishop on b2 still lightening up that whole diagonal. What do y'all think about that? Crazy position. I just want to I just want to just leave that on the board until you realize how crazy this position is and how tactical um, um, Gary Kasparov is when he comes to when it comes to calculating. OK, now let's go back. Let's go back to the original position. And that's why Karpov didn't do the move, because it was too risky and he had better plans to do. <laughs> he had better plans than to risk his life for that night. So that's why in this position, after knight captures on h6, he did the move c3 because that bishop was too strong on the b2 diagonal. It is very crazy. You might need to send a, a mental hospital. <laughs> I did, wait a minute. Knight d6. Yeah, you got the correct move. Knight take on d6. After c3, and I'm just going to do this next move. Wait a minute. This, this work was on g3, my bad. Knight to f5, after knight to f5, then we have the move c takes on b2. Why did Gary Kasparov sacrifice that, sacrifice that bishop? What's the purpose? What, what next move would y'all do here? If y'all world champion, what would y'all do here? We just sacrifice a bishop to do what? What's the follow up? Oh, okay, thank you. I'm going to go now because it's late. Okay, man. See you later. Hello, fellow gamers. We got this amazing game by Gary Kasparov. Make sure if you're just not joining to hit the like button so that we can popularize chess to the world. Just keep, we're just going to keep on going. Who be live streaming chess like this? <laughs> Let's bring chess back to YouTube and leave it all. You know, it's always on Twitch. Like I'm bringing chess back to TikTok, and I'm trying. I'm trying to bring chess back to YouTube. I mean, it's always been on YouTube, but you know what I'm. You know what I mean. We're gonna stream chess on YouTube. Joe Williams. We got knight d6, queen d4. Not sure what queen h4. You're close, side dragon. You are close. 
knight takes on d6. Not knight takes on d6. Well, I guess which knight are you talking about? But, yeah, we're not taking that pawn on d6. We just sacrificed a bishop. h1, I did it. What you do? You're 1600? Good job, man. And Cardu is 1600. Let's go. Thank you for bringing it back on YouTube. I like it better on YouTube. Hey, let's get it. And not queen h5. Is not, that's not the move that Garrett Kasparov did. He did a move close to that. Uh, Phil Josh. Yeah. Queen g4. Queen g4. After queen g4, right? Which is definitely very threatening. Then we have the move by Karpov, bishop to c8. And then why did the queen move to g4? Why did the queen move to g4? What's the purpose? The final game, the man attacked my queen with a rook, but I found a pawn mate. Hey, that's the most disrespectful mate ever is the pawn mates. I am 963. I am 983. Threatening mate. What is the next move? What is the follow up after queen g4? What would y'all do here? Put pressure on g7. Knight takes on g7. I'm 350. It doesn't matter what you are. It doesn't matter what your rating is. It doesn't even. Who cares? Add an attacking piece. What is. I want to see some specific moves in this position. Oh, okay. Side dragon 30. Yeah, I didn't even see your move. You're, you're saying queen h5. And you are partially right. Because the move is queen to h4. If queen h5, queen takes on h5. But queen h4, we're attacking the king. After queen h4, we have to move rook to h6. To defend, of course. After rook to h6, what are we doing next? I resign. It's so bright. Do I need to turn the brightness down? Is that good enough? The more you play chess, um, the more you will improve. I used to be around 300 and I never gave up and I kept playing. Now I am at 860. That's how you do it. I'm trying to turn the brightness down a little. I don't know why it's that bright up in here. Maybe it's just the angle. What is the next move now? Yeah, knight takes on h6, attacking the rook. After knight takes on h6, then we have the move, and this is a Gary Kasparov game against Anatoly Karpov and Navori Lopez. If you want to see the stream, this full stream, then it will be published very soon. You can go back into it. After pawn takes on h6, then we have to move king to h2. After king to h2, queen e5, and then we have the move knight to g5. Threatening f7 fork. After knight to g5, queen f6, and then what do, what do you think Gary Kasparov did next here? What do you think Garrett Kasparov did next year? And this game, what if I told you that this game is probably going to end in the next eight moves? What if I told you that? Would y'all think I'm insane? I played six months and stayed below 400. You got to play and you got to be serious about it, Matello. <laughs> you got to play games, study, and do chess puzzles. You can't just do just one instead of the other. You can't just play games and then pretend like you're getting better. You got to actually study like different concepts, go through like a course, things of that nature. He did the rook. What, what rook move? Why couldn't the rook be taken? What, what rook, what a rook move? Yeah, Rook E8 was played by Mark and Terrence. Rook E8. After Rook E8, then we have the move Bishop to F5. 
after bishop to f5, he, he did, now Gary Kasparov didn't miss checkmate in six, but he, he is still winning. I've got too much work to do to study. Yeah, it's, it's fine if you don't have the time. Just play, just play like, I don't know, just play for fun. It's just have it a recreation. Why didn't he take the rook when it was on e1? Why didn't, what move are y'all talking about here? Why didn't he take the rook when it was on e1? Oh, I see what move y'all talking about here. I see what move y'all talking about. Okay, let's go back. Okay. Okay, y'all talking about this position. Let's go back here. So after knight to g5, why didn't black just take the rook on e1? What is the best move here if... Um, black would have took the rook on e1. What is the best move? Bro, I'm late to chess class. When did you start streaming? Like two hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> what if the rook took on e1? What if the rook took on e1? Yeah. Knight f7 is made. Do y'all see that? Knight f7 is just made. Let me explain. This bishop on b1 is covering this h7 square. And this king cannot go on a g file because of this rook that's covering the g file, the whole g file. And so all it needed to be all that needed to be done was this king to be attacked one time, which after knight f7, that happened, and that's why it is checkmate. You, you can't just capture any piece against a world champion. That's why the move that was played by Anatoly Karpov was queen to f6. After queen to f6, we have the move. Wait a minute. Okay, let's, let's continue on with the game. Queen to f6, rookie 8, bishop to f5. Then we have the move queen takes on h6 being attacked by this queen and this bishop but this bishop cannot move since the rook is pinning that bishop after queen takes on h6 queen takes on h6 what is the next best move here what are we doing next we're gary kasparov we're like the best player in the world and we're trying to demolish our opponent Knight f7, good job, uh, Phil Josh. Knight to f7, forking the king and the queen. After knight f7, king h7, what happens next? What happens next after knight to f7? What, is people are, what are people saying? Where did you get that board? Just got here. By the way, love the channel. Keep it up. Thank you, Ernest. I appreciate it. Yo, knight f7, knight f7. Hey, what's up, Elliot? You're kind of late, man. I just made you a moderator yesterday. You're already late. Come on, man. Be on time. <laughs> That's messed up. What's good, Elliot? <laughs> yeah, side uh, dragon 38. You are correct. Bishop takes on f5. Not taking the queen, but bishop takes on f5. We got something that's more important than the queen, an attack on the king. If we got an attack on the king, then we should be able to finish this in like uh, the next like five moves, in which that's exactly what happens. Because after bishop takes on f5, the only move is queen g6. And what do y'all do here? What do y'all do after queen g6? H1, I have school and work again, but I will do anything for the chess grind. Let's go. I get you. Bishop takes on G6, right. After bishop takes on G6, king to G7, what happens next? 
After bishop g6, king g7, what happens next? Bishop takes on g6. What are we doing here? A lot of people want to do bishop h5 and checking the king again. But we can make this very simple. Just look at all the pieces that you're attacking right now. Just make this very simple. And that's exactly what Garrett Kasparov did. We're not moving the bishop one more time. Garrett Kasparov found another easier variation to go down. Bishop h7, discover check. Well, no, I don't know about bishop h7. I don't, I don't know about that move. Because after king takes on f7, I don't know. Yep, Eli, you are correct. Just take the free rook, guys. Come on. Everybody said bishop h5, but there's a free rook on a8 that we can just capture. Like, <laughs> come on. Get with it. Hey, keep the energy high. Come on. Let's get to it. So after a rook takes on a8, bishop to e7, we got rook to b8, and then after rook to b8, we got a5, um, what, what move happened here, bishop to e4, king takes on f7, taking our knight, then what's next, this last move made the opponent resign, this last move made the opponent resign, I'm looking at the chat right now. What are we doing here? If you use Gary Kasparov, how can you just finish this position? I mean, we're literally up like two rucks. I got a test tomorrow, H1. I got to go to sleep. Good night. Thank you, Matello. I appreciate it. Underrated. Uh, rook take rook f3 check, not rook f3 check, rook g6, b rook uh, will go to f8. Oh, wow, that is interesting. Is yep, that's f8. Mark, you are wait a minute, nope, Mark, you are not correct. The bishop cannot go to e5. Julius, you are correct. Bishop takes on d5, and then the opponent resigned because after knight captures on d5. Rook captures on b2, and yeah, this this game is just over. The only advantage that Black had was that pawn being able to promote someday, but yeah, two rooks against two minor pieces is, is not fair at all. So that's why Garry Kasparov is to go, and Anatoly Karpov just got whooped in these two games, and the same opening too, surprisingly enough. Do y'all have any questions about these? about these games and everybody that is here right now i do have a free discord that you can join in the description down below that you can connect with other chess players and plus two increase your chess rating all right improve your chess skills with other people we're almost at a thousand members in that discord so i would join right now at this present moment while you still can clay how you doing Wait a minute, we got a message that was deleted? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Come on, man. Keep the chat clean. <laughs> Attack the bishop, by the way. Do you save your live streams? Yeah, I save all my live streams, so you can just look at them um, afterwards. I save all my live streams. You can just look at them. Just go to the section. Appreciate you and your book recommendations earlier. We'll be back. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'll be streaming every single day. I'll be streaming every single day. Probably tomorrow it would have to be around like, I don't know, 10.30, 10 o'clock, but we'll see. Appreciate uh, What's up, man? Hey, Basu, how you doing? You got my catchy openings against D4. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I got that. Did we talk about that? What we got here? Well, the live stream is ending right now, so I'm just answering questions, man. <laughs> Sorry about that. You'll be able to see the live stream earlier. Make sure that everybody liked the video and comment on the video too so that we can get the engagement up, man. And that's how everybody can see your see your good answers. Has any GMs uh, done an Alpha on checkmate? Yeah. It, I think it happened recently against Magnus Carlsen. 
It's ending, man. I just got here. I know. Just look at the stream earlier. We just had fun. We we just went over some good games by Gary Kasparov. See you later, H1. I'm going to bed because I have a Spanish presentation tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah, don't even mention. Hey, come on, Clay. You're the bro. You're the homie. But anyway, hey, thank you for being here. I appreciate every single one of you. And make sure that you keep your eyes on the road and stay healthy and peace. Until next time. Probably after my TikTok live stream, I can play some chess again <laughs> on, on YouTube. Let's get to it. There's a great video about game where Kasparov goes through all his lines. Yeah, that would be pretty good. Uh, I am going to try to get to 900 ELO. Wish me luck. All right. Well, I, man, I believe in you. I don't have to wish you luck. I already know that you're going to get.